you have the ability to create frame-by-frame -frame animations in Moho. In order to do so, you need to create a special layer that will allow you to do the frame-by-frame -frame work. On the Layers panel, if we click once on the new layer button, we can choose frame-by-frame -frame from the list. And you'll see a new layer has been created. It has three little rectangles indicating frames, and I'm just going to click once on it and rename it to frame by frame. Now, I also want to demonstrate that this is going to react a little bit differently on the timeline. So with the frame by frame layer selected, you'll notice that we already have a channel set up as well as three buttons and a place to enter in a number. Here, we have the ability to create new frames, delete frames, as well as duplicate frames and change the interval for how we are adding the frames. So if you want to add a frame every three frames, every two frames versus one, you can do so. But if we click on the vector layer, you'll notice that all of these options disappear. And this is the power of the frame by frame layer. It really does act differently compared to the other layers. And what we want to do is make sure we're on that frame by frame layer. And let's say we want to start animating. Well, I'm going to grab the freehand tool here, maybe come in here and just adjust my options really quick, set this to random, and we're just going to draw out an oval. So we'll start and come down and draw out an oval just like this. Nothing fancy, just something for us to look at. With that now in place, as you can see, if I scrub the timeline, that oval stays there. And the keys are also indicating that. We have one key and then after that nothing is being changed and so we have that image here forever. Now what happens if we add in a frame? Come over here and click on new frame. A couple things happen. First, the oval disappears. Second, a new darker keyframe is added to the timeline. Darker keyframes on your frame by frame layers indicate nothing is currently on that frame while the white layer will indicate that you do have something drawn on that frame. So from here, we could go in and continue the frame by frame process of drawing things out. Now, there is something that can help us with this, and that is onion skins. Onion skins allow us to preview different frames, so that way we can use them as references and create more accurate looking frame by frame animations. So if we come over here and click on the enable onion skins button, what this will do is create one onion skin going back. And you can see this indicated on the timeline. As we scrub forward, this little green rectangle falls along. And anything that ends up in that green rectangle will be previewed. So frame zero here is being previewed as a red outline. So that way we could use it as a reference for the next part of our animation. So we could come in here now and let's just add in something like this. So we're going to continue the animation. The ball is going to go down a little bit and I'm doing not a great job with this, but hopefully it'll give you some understanding. You can see now that the keyframe is lighter in color, indicating we have something on there. Now, if we go to the next frame, you're going to see that the first frame preview disappears because we only have one onion skin. If you want this to be previewing more than just one frame, we could come over here as an example and click here to create a second onion skin and you can create your onion skins wherever you want based on where your scrubber is so if we come back here now and we're onion skinning these two you can see that we have the outline for the first frame there as well the second one is being shown as a red outline to indicate that that is the previous frame and then we could come in here now and draw in our third frame. But make sure before you do that, you click and add, or else you're just going to be adding more detail to the second frame. So come in here, click and add. We now have a better view of what this is doing. So we have the faded one on frame one, the more dark line on frame two to indicate the more closer frame to this. And then frame three, we can add in our artwork and continue to go down like this and go like that. And everything works as it always does. So if you want to come in and use different tools to modify this, you can do so just like that. Now, if at any point you're like, I don't like this, I don't want to continue doing this with this frame, you can come back here and choose to delete the frame. So wherever your scrubber was, 
in this case it was on frame three, we were able to go in and remove that frame. I'm just going to undo that and bring that frame back. And we can also duplicate. So if we come over here and choose to duplicate, you can see here we can duplicate this frame for frame four. And that can be useful. Perhaps you want this to be out to here for some reason, and then you have something go on from there. You can go in and also move these frames around. If you want to customize the intervals in which this is going to be represented. But also too, if you want a certain interval in place, you can do that through this menu right here. So if we're, let's say on frame six, and we decide to change the interval to two. Now, when we add in keys past this, so we're going to go here, and then we add another one and another one, you can see that it is creating a space of one frame between each of these. So if we went in, in and put five and add it in a plus, you can see now it's going to add those frames. And you can adjust your onion skins even more if you want, for instance, if I back up here, not to show the outlines, but the entire actual object, you can go up there and, and you can see that it's adjusting that. So I can change the outlines to how that looks. Colored fills will change the way this looks a little bit. You can see here that it just makes it darker. It just depends on how you want to view this. Relative frames will adjust how the onion skins are tracking. So right now, they are only on one and two because I don't have relative set on. But if I were to come back here and turn relative frames on, when I move my scrubber, those onion skins are going to move along with it. And you can also choose your colors and even clear all onion skins if you don't want onion skinning on anymore. But as you can see, we're able to come in here and create some frame by frame looking animations just by using this layer. And there's some other things to keep in mind too, such as the ability to add and remove frames as well as create intervals. And you can add frames beyond where you're at as well. You don't have to go in sequence. So if all of a sudden you're working on this animation and you wanna to go to frame 120 and add that key, you can do so. And then from there, if you were to add consecutive keys, you can see that it's going to space it out every five frames based on your intervals however you have it set up. So creating frame by frame animations is very possible inside of Moho. You just need to make sure that you set up that frame by frame layer and you use the add and remove keys on the timeline to ensure that you're properly keying each frame for animation.